Hello, and welcome to the Accountability Coach Podcast, where we discuss proven business success principles related to helping you make more money, work less, so you can enjoy having your ideal business and ideal life. This is Ann Backrack. Today, we are honored to have a very special guest with us, who I believe has a message that is good for everyone to hear about having even better health and fitness. You know, our health is so important to be able to do what we need to do every single day to achieve our goals. Nate Palmer is a fitness and nutrition expert, coach, speaker, and writer who believes that being in incredible shape gives you a massive advantage in business, focus, and relationships. He's the number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method and Passport Fitness. Nate helps business owners and entrepreneurs improve their physique, finances, and family timing using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. We appreciate you joining us today, Nate, and I am so excited to ask you so many questions. Thanks, Anne. I'm so excited to be here, and thank you for getting through that tongue twister of an intro I gave you. <laughs> Well, let's get started here. You know, I hear a lot about, at least lately, about intermittent fasting. And so it seems to be more popular these days for some reason. Would you suggest that we consider intermittent fasting? And if so, what are the benefits? This is a great question. I love talking about intermittent fasting. It is so effective and so simple. It's one of my favorite things. And it's one of the things I put kind of like my top three list of ways of getting incredible results quickly. So I think that everybody should be considering intermittent fasting in some form or fashion, and there's a variety of ways to do it. Some are a little bit more effective than others, but a lot of it is dependent on what your goals are, what your lifestyle looks like, what your day-to-day -day is like. But if you have not tried it, there's like the easiest way to get into it, just be extending your time, of like your fasting window. So you stop eating at night after dinner, you know, and then push that, like, Rather than eating first thing in the morning, push that back a couple hours, push that back to 11 o'clock, push that back to noon. That's a really easy way to get involved in this. And there are some other ways, though, that I think are equally, if not more beneficial. Um, and depending on what your goals are, if your goal is to lose more weight or just have more mental acuity and focus, they can be very effective for that as well. You want me to go into like some other different types of ways of doing it? or? Yeah, I'd love uh, to hear that. Absolutely. Okay. So the way that most people are most familiar with it is that... 16 8 intermittent fasting window which is basically like you stop eating at 8 p.m you don't eat again until noon the next day and then you eat all your food within 12 to between 12 and 8. so i was a big proponent of this method early on i did it for about 18 months myself i really liked the results i got but what i found with that method and was that people who have really busy lives who are entrepreneurs high performers need a lot of focus during their day it was tough for them because lunch ended up being the, like a bigger meal because they were hungry. They wanted to, you know, eat the most of their food at lunch. So what happens after you eat food, though, is a lot of the blood from your appendages, from your brain gets pulled into the gut for digestion. And if that happens, it kind of gives you that like that, like a mild version of that thing that we get after Thanksgiving dinner, you know, where you just want to like curl up and watch the Detroit Lions lose at football, you know, not really trying to go out and just do a whole lot of mental activities, physical activities, whatever else that looks like. So I've kind of changed my stance on that for a lot of busy professionals over the last couple of years. The second reason for that is that fasting, just like exercise, just like a lot of things, it's a stressor and it's a health, it can be a healthy stressor, but a lot of times for women, especially premenopausal women, that 16 and eight fasting window can lead to some negative issues over time if done for like between like over six weeks essentially. So without all of that in mind, I've now found that a 24 to 48 hour fast done weekly can be much more effective. And I think there's three main reasons for that. Number one, even just a single 24 hour fast, something that's done from 6 p.m. like you finish dinner at 6 p.m. and then you don't eat again until the dinner the next day at 6 p.m. So you don't spend two nights going without. Um, that is equal to about three and a half of the 16 hour fasting windows in terms of the autophagy, the like the cleansing process, the, the natural detoxification your body gets, the fat burn, et cetera. So it's really effective, it's great. And it's not that hard, just like basically moving all your, like just only eating dinner the next day. 48 obviously can be even better if we, if we do it like that. The other reason that is that there's a, there's a mental component to fasting all day that I just don't think you get from a 16 hour fasting window. 
basically it's like, hey, I'm setting a uh, like a moderately difficult goal and then I'm accomplishing it. And the more you do that, the more esteemable actions you you partake in, the more self-esteem you have, the more you realize, hey, I am indomitable and I can do anything that I want to. Like if I want to lose weight, no problem. I'll just set my mind to it and I'll finish it. If I want to build a business, no problem. Just set my mind to it, stay consistent, and I'll finish it. And I think there's there's like we don't nobody talks about that aspect because you know it's not sexy. People want to talk about like how do I get abs in three weeks and all these all these other things that you see on the men's health covers. But this is a, a critically important piece if you want to have that type of personality where someone's like, oh, Anne said she's gonna do a thing. Anne said she's gonna write a book. I, I can basically consider it done. I can set my watch by that. And that's the type of person that I want to be. And I know that most of my clients are in that same, in that same like place in life. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. And I'm going to kind of share some probably, I, mean, I don't know if it's secret or not information, but okay, I'm not, I'm not pre-menopausal, I'm post-menopausal. And I actually had, my liver fat was a little high. And the doctor suggested that I do the intermittent fasting, the 24-hour one once a week. And I did that for eight weeks and my liver fat got totally back to normal in that short a period of time just by oh doing gosh. that. I know. Pretty That's cool, fantastic. right? Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It, it was amazing because they said, well, let's recheck you. And I said, well, that, don't you think it's too soon? And they said, no, let's just see. And they said, it's totally back to normal just by once a week doing the 24 hour fasting. Not only that, I agree with you because at first I thought, how am I not going to eat from dinner to dinner? How is that going to work? I've never done that before. And I just did it. And when you just do it, you realize, okay, I can do this. This is not that hard. And it really does help you with your confidence and doing other things as well. So I really appreciate you sharing that and bringing that up because I think it's totally true and specifically from my perspective. And I love you brought up the liver fat because a lot of people don't realize that visceral fat the fat that surrounds our organs is in itself almost an organ it's something that like that can grow different like like veins and and like blood vessels around it it can send hormones to your brain it can really mess with us long term so fasting like beyond beyond like you know eating healthy and having more vegetables and all the things that we know we need to be doing fasting is a great way to eliminate visceral fat basically press the factory restore settings on some of your hormones uh, and the, the three major ones that I'm thinking of are insulin, you know, so you're not like out of balance with your insulin, which is causes those crazy energy crashes during the day, hunger pangs at like those 10, 30, 3, 30, 9 p.m. Ghrelin, which is a hormone that has to do with your hunger, like because if your visceral fat and your your stomach flora are basically sending messages to your brain saying, hey, we want more sugar, then it's releasing this hormone called ghrelin. And you're like, wow, I'm, why am I starving? I just ate. Why am I so hungry right now? And it's really hard to white knuckle your way through this. So doing that fast is like a really great way of just resetting that. Oh, that's good to know, too. I, I love this. OK, so is breakfast really the most important meal of the day? Because so many times we've heard this, right? Breakfast, you have to eat it. It's the most important meal of the day. Is that really true? Good question. And I mean, like we've heard breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We've also heard fast, skip breakfast. Then we've heard eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. We've heard like all different combative pieces of information about about breakfast. Right. So it's like, what's what's the truth? And like the truth is, I'm not I'm not going to say sit here and stay like, oh, I, I know the number one way to do things. And if you don't do it this way, you're you're fooling yourself. Because, again, I think that like that ego is rampant through the fitness and supplementation industry and it doesn't serve anyone so if you like breakfast great if you don't like breakfast that's also great but you have to find out what works for you in my personal experience my experience working with clients like i said before when i was having people skip breakfast what it meant is they were loading up at lunch they were getting tired and they were taking four hours to do two hours worth of activities in the afternoon which set them up for bad times when they got home to their family they were tired they had to sit on the couch and watch espn for 30 minutes before they could hang out with their kids it just had this like snowball effect that was not it was not what we were looking for. So when we started adding breakfast back in and changing the fast to be once per week, what we started to see is that it was a very effective way of giving our body the nutrients it needs to do. For mo most of my clients are what I consider mental athletes, not physical athletes. They're not getting up and running triathlons and doing ultra marathons. That's not that's never really been the goal. So the goal has always been how do I do really well at my work? How do I create financial success and stability for my family and still show up at home with a lot of energy for the people that I that really matter to me? So in that, in the, with if that is the goal and that's where you're thinking like, that sounds like me, that sounds like what I want, then I would urge you to try breakfast, but eat it in a very specific way. 
most of the time, like the standard American diet says what for breakfast? Like if you watch kids cartoons and it's like bowl of sugary cereal, glass of milk because you didn't get enough milk on the cereal, glass of orange juice because you're probably really thirsty, banana, bagel, toast. You know, it's like all these high carb, high sugar, what I think of as high energy foods. Now, I don't want to sit here and say carbs are bad, avoid them for, forever, never eat them again. If you have a bagel, you're out of luck because that's not that's not sustainable either. But if we can change breakfast to being, rather than being high carb, high American diet, we go high protein and high fat. What you're doing is you're setting yourself up for success all day because fat is what I call a low impact food. So fats are great for fueling times where you're sitting at the computer, writing emails, responding to messages, presenting at meetings, getting back to people, being in that deep work, having that mental acuity, that focus to actually dominate at whatever you're trying to put your energy towards and putting yourself, setting yourself up for success in that way by having the right breakfast can make a big difference. So I would say like, I'm not trying to tell you, hey, don't eat breakfast or do eat breakfast. I'm trying to say, test out what works for you because no one's gonna know you like you do, but try out this method. I consider, I call it the million dollar body method or glycogen priming. Try it out, test it, and then if it's valuable to you, if it works, great. Let's run with it because it's very sustainable and it's easy to do long term. And if it doesn't work and you hate it, well then, you know, forget forget I ever said anything. <laughs> so when you talk about fats, just so we're clear, and you're talking about fats are great for fueling, give us an idea of what you would recommend as a fat for fueling. Great. So in the morning, what I like to do is, is include like a peanut butter or an almond butter. That's a great option. I'll throw that in a protein shake. Most of my clients do that as well because protein shakes are just so simple. They're just like a way of automating some great nutrition in the morning. You can take the protein, you can add some fats to it, and then you can just tweak it, change it, add stuff to base, based on whatever you want. So like I've been adding a lot of like reishi mushrooms recently for the anti-inflammatory, the immune boosting benefits. I've been adding a lot of cinnamon for the anti-inflammatory benefits. Uh, and I've been throwing my vitamin D in there as well. And I also put some salt in, in my shakes because it's a great way to stay hydrated. I live in the desert. So even in the winter, I still want to prioritize that. So my shake becomes essentially this just nutrient rich, um, like perfect, perfectly suited food for me in the morning. But some people are like, I don't want to be a pro, I don't want to do protein shakes. I'm not a bodybuilder or whatever. Okay, that's fine. What you can have instead is, is having some eggs and some avocado. So egg whites are going to be a great protein source. Egg yolks are going to be a great fat source. Avocado, another great fat source. Or if you want to try something a little bit weirder, I think that a meat and nut breakfast can be amazing for energy. So one of my favorite breakfasts before I do anything that's a little bit more intense is I'll have chicken thighs and almonds in the morning. So chicken thighs, great source of protein, a little higher in fat, plus they reheat better than chicken breasts. That's a pro tip for you, by the way. And then almonds, a lot of healthy fats. So kind of what I listed out here, just healthy fats would be like egg yolks, almonds, or any like or peanuts, avocados. You could even put some like coconut oil in there. Uh, as like a as a healthy version of fat or MCT oil, I'd, I'd include all those. Nice, love it. I'm learning so much here. I'm having so much fun. We're getting tactical. Um, <laughs> um, how can busy professionals create energy like on demand? I think there's there's a couple things here that are really important to remember. Number one is that the brain fog we sometimes experience in the morning throughout they're all reflective of what we ate or how we slept the night before. So if you ate a, like you ate pizza for dinner the last couple of nights, you wake up in the brain fog, that's what you're feeling. You're feeling the effects of the fuel you already put in. And when you're, when you're trying to get, get out of a, a situation like that by drinking more coffee or, you know, doing some meditation, you're already behind. So, you know, it's like, it's like one of those days. And I don't know if you ever had one of these before where you like, you miss your alarm for something and you're 30 minutes late. So you don't get to like brush your teeth or shower. You're running out the door. You're buttoning the wrong buttons. You're you're mad at traffic, and the whole day you're behind. You're trying to play catch up. You know, you, for something so simple as like a as oversleeping 30 minutes. You ever, you ever been there? Actually, no. Oh. <laughs> I don't set well, an I can, alarm. <laughs> I could learn from you then. I wake up naturally and automatically right at five o'clock in the morning usually. <laughs> All right. Well, that's I mean that's gonna be some life goals for me then. <laughs> Cause I've been there before. You well, know, most people late. have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you're like following behind that, like the car that normally wouldn't bother you, but like, you're like, now you're like, go, why are you driving so slow? And you are losing your mind and you show up frantic and angry. Yeah. But like if you're, if you're playing catch up all the time, there's no real tactics or trips, tricks that are going to, 
help you to produce energy on demand. But if you've taken care of yourself, you drank enough water, you're making sure that you're feeling really good, there's a couple ways that you can create energy at the moment. Number one is like through a, like a ritual where you have one song maybe that you just love. And it's a song that you always get energy to, that always feels good when you listen to it, but throwing that song on and just keeping that as a ritual. So some people will use this in a, like, as like, I always listen to the same song when I get to the gym. The first song is always kind of to gear me up and put me in the state that I want to be in. So that's, an, that's a real easy way. Plus it involves you listening to songs you like. So, you know, win-win. The second way is through some vigorous exercise. A lot of people think vigorous exercise, what I got to run a 5K or something? Nah, all you need is like 30 to 60 seconds. So this is why I really recommend that in the mornings, you start off your day with water and 60 seconds of explosive exercise. So drinking the water is gonna rehydrate your body and then the explosive exercise is going to shift you from what's called parasympathetic nervous system dominance. That's your rest and digest, kind of like tone down, getting ready for bed feeling, post Thanksgiving, you know what I'm talking about? And the into a sympathetic nervous system dominance. Okay, so it's like a spectrum. So a lot of people think that on the on the far side of sympathetic, that's like fight or flight. I choose to think of it as shake and bake because there's not a lot of saber tooth tigers like jumping out of like the mall to chase me around. So I'm rarely in like the fight or flight mode. But we want to push ourselves into that mode where we're up. We're in the flow state. We're feeling good. We're looking around. And if we can do that by doing just something as simple as just jumping up and down on your toes, like pretending you got a jump rope, but just jumping up and down on your toes, great. You wanna do some you wanna do some jumping jacks? That's great. If you have a little rebounder trampoline, I got a three-year-old at home, so I have a I have a trampoline and all the things that comes with it. So I do that, and that's awesome. Or if you're a masochist and you wanna do burpees, you know what? Good for you, but I will not be joining you. Yeah, I'm not joining you on the burpees either. Uh -uh. <laughs> Talking about this a minute, the 60 seconds of explosive exercise. Let's say that you're sitting at your desk, you know, you're working, you're spending a couple hours doing whatever it is you're doing. Do you recommend like throughout the day, like every 90 minutes, every couple hours that you do the 60 second like explosive exercise to really help you? That's a great option. I don't necessarily do the 60 seconds of explosive exercise unless I need on-demand energy or if I'm just trying to like change my state. Most of the time, though, I really do recommend like once an hour every 55 minutes or so, getting up and just walking around. Even if it's just like a loop around your office, stretching your legs, moving that blood a little bit is going gonna, is gonna to help you from staying stagnant. It's going to get some steps in. So I like that. But if you're like, no, I want, I want a little bit more, then yeah, hop up, do some jumps. Okay. So about every 55 minutes or hour or so uh, to do something that really helps you get the blood flowing. In an ideal world, yeah, but like I understand that also some of us are get glued to our desks for two hours at a time. So, you know, again, like it's not a hard and fast rule. It's do what you can when you can, you know. How can working with your body's natural biorhythm accelerate fat loss results? You're asking the hard questions today, Anne. I know. Yeah, this is a good question. And I think that a lot of times we, we kind of screwed this up in our own lives because we think about like, okay, you know, if you have a, a like a little bit of, of education around nutrition, we think, okay, carbohydrates, that's the energy that I need. But what we don't realize is that we are, body already stores energy in the form of fat. You know? And that's, and I was working at a supermarket. Um, and the reason I was working at a supermarket, Anna, is because I, I wrecked my friend's car because I'm dumb. So I was 17 years old. I pushed a car down into another car and fast forward a month, I was working at Albertsons, pushing carts around and earning $6 an hour to pay for the damage I caused. But one thing I learned from the supermarket is that when you go and you grab a big gallon of milk out of the back of the, the or out of the, um, you know, the back of the store where they keep the milk and the dairy, I don't like I, as the employee there, I don't come around and put milk back in the front where you pull it out from. I have to go walk around the back and put the milk on the back, and let it slide up. This is called the last in first out or LIFO method because, you know, it's not good for the store or for the smells if you have all the old milk just sitting in back, right? So in the same vein, if we are always eating carbohydrates, what we're doing is we're doing the opposite. We're doing first in, first out. We're training our body to burn sugar. So I eat a bagel, I burn a bagel. My fat sits there. I eat some, like some, a sandwich, my body burns a sandwich, the fat sits there. Now, if we can change and adapt so that are we're teaching our body to utilize its natural rhythms to burn fat, because our body wants to burn fat, that's what it's there for, but we have to tell it, we have to give it a reason to do so. So that's why I really recommend having a high protein, high fat breakfast. 
because when you have fat in the morning, you're essentially turning on your body's fat burning mechanisms because it's as easy to burn that fat as it is to burn stored fat. So your body will start burning more fat during the day. And what's amazing about fat is that it's a low impact fuel. It's going to help you feel more focused when you're doing work at your computer, when you're do, when you're sitting down and having meetings, you're going to have more mental acuity and be more turn, turned on. When you have a lot of carbohydrates, it's going to want you to stand up, move around, run a 5k, but it's not necessarily going to help you in a meeting. You're going to get a little bit more tired. You might feel a little more lethargic since you're not really moving around burning that. So again, just knowing how your body responds to certain nutrients is paramount if you want to create and be able to manufacture all the energy. Secondly, I think that lunch, we want to have a little bit of a lighter lunch. And the reason for this is that like knowing that your body during the day is, is searching for food because it wants to go into that rest and digest state. So if you give it a big lunch, you go to Chipotle, have a big burrito, your body's like, great, done for the day. Let's rest and start a fire and just chill out, right? If you think back to like paleolithic ancestors, it wasn't the people who were full that were going out on hunts. It's the people who were hungry. And so evolutionarily, our body has responded to that by giving us access when we're a little bit hungry to more focus, more brain power, you're, you're much better able to take memories and put them from short-term into long-term memory. So you get a little bit more like, like quicker mentally, as well as like in like crazy things and like improving your hand-eye coordination when you're a little hungry. So the hungrier you are, the better you're going to be at some of these tasks that we need to get done during the day. So protein and, and fat for breakfast, a really light lunch of proteins and vegetables. And then at night when it's time to really rest, digest, chill out and shift into a more of like a relaxation mode that's when we can have a bigger meal add in some carbohydrates and this like coincidentally also works with a lot of people we want to have fun fun with our friends and our family we want to have bigger meals we're going to go out to client dinners we're going to have a glass of wine here and there so if we can basically front load our day with high protein and low carbs and then at night we have a little bit more carbs and we can kind of relax and not stress so much about our diet it doesn't give you the opportunity to, to eat pizza every single night for the rest of your life with no consequences, but it, but it gets close to that. And if we, and that's only because we understand what our body's natural rhythms are like and how we can manipulate those to meet our own ends. What do you think is the best supplement for recovery, for sleep and for performance? Good question. So kind of like I was going into before, I think that having carbohydrates in the evening can be one of the best things that people can do for recovery and performance. And this is what like the tenant of the glycogen priming method that I believe very firmly in is that at the end of the day, we've burned through our body's natural glycogen stores. Glycogen is stored in the liver and the muscles. So like by just by walking, moving, uh, doing stuff that we are, we're getting through that and, and getting to our body's fat stores and reserves. And then at the end of the day, we have a, car, a high carbohydrate. We've shifted our body now into a rest and digest mode. We've given ourselves the ability to recover and repair and rebuild our bodies while we're sleeping. Plus you're going to sleep a little bit deeper. So I think that if you have a high protein and a high carbohydrate dinner and then have a little bit lower fats, your body's going to digest that in a cleaner way. So like, I don't know if you ever had like a pizza dream, Anne, where you eat like a pizza or lasagna that's like high carb and high fat and then you have weird dreams all night oh yeah oh yeah yeah that you know what i'm happen. talking about yeah for sure i thought you were gonna say like no i never had that i only eat salads <laughs> for dinner and i was gonna be like and come on wake up at 5 a.m naturally with a lot of energy only eat salads you make me look bad <laughs> <laughs> no no i got you on that one i'm i'm all about that <laughs> So having high carbs is not bad, but it's having the high carbs and the high fats that can lead to like that sluggishness late at night. So I do believe there's a couple of supplements that can help you sleep and recover better. But I think the one thing that people don't realize is that carbs can do that too if they're manipulated in the correct way. How do you know if you need a detox or a detox from sugar, for example? Yeah, great question. I think going back to kind of what we were talking about earlier with some of the hormonal balances and things, there are two major ways that we can tell if we're out of whack, if we need a little bit of a detox and some time, time away from sugar. And that is by checking in with ourselves on our energy levels, as well as our hunger cravings. Those two things are the canary in the coal mine, I think, for, for optimal, you know, optimal energy, optimal lifestyle. Because if you have a lot of energy, you feel really good all the time, then chances are what you're eating is probably the right thing. But if you're getting hungry after eating breakfast, if you're getting hungry after lunch, and if you're getting hungry after dinner, looking in the fridge five or six times, decreasing your standards each time to the point where you're like, I guess I will eat this old butt of this bread and a piece of cheese. 
you know, if you're if you're experiencing those symptoms, there's the chances are that you need a sugar detox. We need to remove sugar from your body for a minute so that your body can again get back to restoring your factory settings. So if if you've ever experienced that where you're having like the hunger cravings, but also like lethargy at like 10, 10 30. You want to crawl into your desk, take a quick nap. You're like, why? That's six cups of coffee. What's going on with me? That's probably an imbalance in your body. And there's a couple of the reasons for this. Insulin resistance is one. And if you had fatty liver disease or had some like fatty liver sim symptoms, and you probably dealt with some insulin resistance, which means your body's not capable of, of utilizing insulin and carbohydrates, which break down into sugar appropriately. The other thing is, um, again, what we talked about earlier, the, the, that ghrelin, the hormone to your brain that sends hunger signals, that can be manipulated by this gut bacteria. So if you're feeding yourself a lot of sugar uh, or even just carbohydrates and like highly processed carbs, if you're feeding your sugar all the time, you're feeding this bacteria in your, in your stomach, the sugar all the time, when it doesn't get it, it's, it'll, it actually have, has access to your brain. It'll send a signal saying, hey, we need more sugar, which is why like a lot of us will have a big breakfast, but hungry at 1030 because we're like, because we're, our bodies are hormonally out of balance. So instead of having six blueberries to kind of regain control of our blood sugar, we have half of a donut and then continue that up and down, up and down process throughout the day. Again, it's like getting behind early and then not and having to play catch up. Interesting. I, I wouldn't think about eating half a donut. I'd eat the whole thing. So there you go. Well, if we're, as long as we're being honest, I probably have two. So <laughs> I was trying to be like, oh, no, a half a donut. Like, that's what we have. Right. No, you're right. It's 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 two or three, depending on depending on if anyone watched me eat the second one. Exactly. Yeah, you can't just eat half a donut. There's just no way that's going to work for me. <laughs> you have something related to like a sugar detox program or something? Yeah, right? great question. So I, um, if anyone wants to check it out, basically, I can uh, put the send the link so you can have it for for your uh, like the show notes. But basically, if you want to go to million dollar body method dot com slash sugar dash form or just, sorry, milliondollarbodymethod.com slash sugar, that will get you there. So you'll get a chance to, to sign up and get a, a free five-day sugar detox where I walk you through how to do this. And honestly, like a lot of people are like, a detox, isn't that like, don't I have to drink a bunch of tea or celery juice? Nah, your body already has a liver and kidneys. Those things are more powerful than any like pill powder or potion. So we're gonna use the power of your body, the power of fasting, and the power of drinking the right types of, of water to get you there. Awesome, love it. And again, the link to get the sugar detox is milliondollarbodymethod.com forward slash sugar. Any other words of great wisdom you wish to share with us today? Oh, man, I don't know if I've – have I said any words of wisdom yet? I, you have a lot for me. Of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you have for me, and I appreciate it. So I think that if I if I had to kind of distill my ideas around fitness and nutrition outside of like we talked a lot about tactics today, Anne, which are great, right? It's nice to know what to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's nice to like look at these things and be like, oh, that's cool, that's cool information. Ghrelin, leptin, kind of lost me with the insulin, but okay, I think he's probably knows what he's talking about. None of this stuff matters though. I'll be honest with you. Like this is this is critically unimportant stuff until we address one piece of information. And that is, that's a mindset issue that a lot of us have where we think we fail. We think that, oh, I ate some pizza. I failed. I had too many drinks this weekend. I failed. I ruined my diet. But if we adopt this attitude, then we're never going to be successful long term because we've already given up. We've already quit before we even started because we've thought that there is such a thing as failure. And I'm here to tell you, you don't listen right now, whether it's building a business, building a relationship, or building the body of your dreams. You cannot lose if you don't quit. You can't lose if you don't quit. So you have the 17 pieces of pizza. You drink 27 White Claws. It doesn't matter. Go back to the basics. Go back to doing what you know you can do. Take a long-term perspective on this. Stop asking how much, how much weight you can lose in 21 days. Think about the next five years. Because if you think about this in a, in a three-year, five-year time span, and just realize that you got that you can be consistent over that time period, the people are going to look at you after that and be like, wow, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? And you're gonna be like consistently over a long period of time. And they're gonna be like, well, what do you, how much do you think I can lose this month? And you're gonna just shake your head at them. But if we start off any any process, any long-term process, anything that's worth having with that, that long-term mindset of can't lose if I don't quit, then we're already, we are already guaranteed to be victorious. We, our success is already promised to us. 
So taking that mindset is more important than having a shake for breakfast because you'll find a way if it's important to you. You'll find a way if you know that you can't lose. I love it. Well, I appreciate your time and your wisdom. Uh, and I took quite a lot of notes and we'll get on to the sugar detox that you have, the five-day uh, sugar detox. I'm in. Count me in. Awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Again, I really appreciate you being with us today and sharing such great insight. Have a super fantastic day. My hope for our time together with Nate is that you got value and an idea or two that will help you be even more successful and more fit and healthy. Feel free to share my podcast with others as they can be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries. And if you'd like to get a short daily fix from me, subscribe to the Accountability Minute, which can also be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries. And remember to subscribe to my proven business success resources and tips blog by going to accountabilitycoach.com forward slash blog. And always aim for what you want each and every day. Until next time, make it a great day today and every day. I appreciate you listening.